A major heat dome is on the way for the United States heading towards next week, and it is going to impact a lot of the east all week long, with temperatures surging to intense levels as far north as the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, where some numbers could get upwards of 100 degrees. I've got the details not only on temperatures, but also on the precipitation pattern ahead in this video, so stick around. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. As always, the model maps that I use to predict the weather throughout my videos are from WeatherBell, so check out their trial link right down there in the description. Also, just my typical friendly reminder to those of you who are not subscribed to the channel but enjoy watching my content, or if you're new here and you want to subscribe after this video, hit that button down below because I'll deliver a consistent, accurate, and easy to understand forecast right to you in the future. All right, we're going to start today with the mid-level pattern from the European model because it's going to show us what's going on around 15 to 20,000 feet up in the atmosphere, and I'm going to show you how this is impacting what we've got going on down here at the surface. This makes things really simple to understand, really, if you focus on the yellows and oranges and the blues. Let's start with the yellows and oranges as we head towards our Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to you, by the way, as we head towards our Sunday, June 16th of 2024. These yellows and oranges over parts of the Great Lakes region and the eastern United States in general indicate that we've got an anomaly here. This anomaly is going to be with ridging, and that's why we're going to have a lot of warmer than average conditions getting going over this region, as you probably saw in the title and thumbnail of this video. Now, meanwhile, where I'm drawing these arrows over here between some of those yellows and oranges and where we've got the blues indicating troughing and low pressure back on over here in the northwestern United States, this is where that jet stream is going to be flowing, and we're going to be seeing some storm systems kind of ride that jet stream and bring some significant weather, or at least some showers and thunderstorms at the minimum here over parts of specifically the north central plains, the upper Midwest, but even in some other areas of the high plains and central United States going through next week. And that pattern is going to continue, especially as the ridging builds in the east and the troughing becomes even more pronounced in the west, heading towards our Tuesday, June 18th of 2024. This is as we head towards 2 p.m. It's very similar if you go towards 5 to 8 p.m. as well. You see these deeper reds from Indiana and Michigan all the way in over there to Maine and southeast Canada. This is where we've got a very anomalous ridge. Temperatures are going to be 20 to 30 degrees above average in many locations, as I'll show you a little bit later in the video. Still going to be at least some ridging over a lot of the eastern United States as well, keeping things above average and a, quite a below average in terms of precipitation. In between the ridge and the trough, though, again, in this area I just circled right here, heading towards the midweek time frame of next week, that's where things are probably going to remain active. And look at this. This could be more ridging for a lot of the United States, even heading down the line June 20th and onward there. So we'll keep an eye on that. One thing I do want to point out that ties into this pattern overview right now, though, is your total precipitation, because we're not going to have a lot of it here in the east as we head through the Wednesday, June 19th time frame. I don't want these greens and blues under this high pressure system that I'm drawing right now in parts of the northeastern United States to deceive you, because a lot of those are from rain that's falling active as I film this video on your Friday, June 14th of 2024. So really, starting right after this video and going through Wednesday, June 19th, or even onward from there over a lot of the southeast, the mid-Atlantic, into parts of the northeast, I mean, you see those grays and colors and what they mean, even some of the lighter greens. I mean, only a tenth to a quarter of an inch of rain. That is not a lot of rain. We could see some sudden drought start to fill in in some of these areas, while meanwhile, other areas rack up on precipitation and even see flooding chances with multiple rounds of storms through this weekend and into early next week. One of those where I just circled on up there coming out of the Dakotas and Nebraska into parts of Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin, where some two to four inch totals will not be out of the question, even in some isolated to scattered fashion with locally higher amounts. The same will go with some locally higher amounts out of a tropical entity down here here closer to the Gulf Coast and specifically South Texas and Southern Louisiana shores there. We'll be keeping an eye on that and I'll be talking a little bit more about that entity later in the video. So keep an eye out for that. But here we go. Let's talk about the precipitation pattern with our future radar from the European model. Later in the video, that's when we'll talk day-by-day -day temperatures and anomalies. So if you want to skip to that, there's always going to be those timestamps right down there in the description. If you run your finger along the scroll bar of this video as well, you can access those as well. Now, here we go as we head towards our Saturday, June 15th of 2024 in the afternoon and evening here. Look at this, showers and thunderstorms into the north central United States. This is going to be a common theme over the course of the next week or so, as I've been talking about. Some of these will have the potential to be severe. Some of those in the central plains coming from especially Kansas on up into places like Omaha, Nebraska, some parts of Iowa, into southern Minnesota as well. Wind, hail, isolated tornadoes are not out of the question in isolated scattered fashion there. We'll also have a few severe storms possible into Montana and then coming on out there into the western parts of South and North Dakota there. So, Two little areas to watch, and we'll dive a little deeper into that moments into the video as well. But here we go, continuing into our Sunday, our Father's Day here. There are going to be some more nuisance showers and thunderstorms for a lot of the country. So if you're not under the heat on Sunday, you're under some of the storms probably, at least in the central United States, from parts of Kansas, Nebraska, all the way to the upper Midwest where some scattered storms will be possible, not only through the late afternoon, but also into the evening and overnight. Here we go towards our Monday, more storms firing up, a new little low-pressure system sitting up there. According to this model, anyway, things can change. 
over parts of Minnesota and into Wisconsin. That could fire up. You see some of those deeper greens in central and northern Minnesota. A new round of some showers and storms with damaging winds, some hail there. Tornadoes are not going to be a huge concern over the course of the next five to seven days, but we could have some isolated ones with each day's marginal to slight severe weather threats that we're probably going to continue seeing from the Storm Prediction Center. Also, I did want to point out some parts of the Mississippi River Valley trying to push up against this ridge on Monday, June 17th. We'll be seeing some shower and thunderstorm coverage, particularly closer to where we've got a lot more moisture in the Gulf of Mexico. So Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Missouri, surrounding spots, Memphis, Tennessee, all these areas. This is where we could be at least seeing some showers and thunderstorms in isolated, scattered fashion, hit or miss. Monday afternoon, that could go again as we head towards our Tuesday. That's especially if you go with the GFS model, which shows a slightly weaker ridge in the east, which means a little bit more precipitation will be able to move up against it. But nonetheless, your model in that area I just circled keeps things active Tuesday afternoon. We'll probably be looking at more storms Wednesday afternoon, but look at this down here. Parts of Texas, the Gulf Shores of Louisiana as well. It's definitely going to be pretty active. So from Houston down to Beaumont, Texas, I'm um, curling around towards parts of Corpus Christi, all these spots. It's definitely going to be some heavy rain starting probably late on Tuesday in some locations after some more isolated coverage on Monday. And then we'll see this continue to fill in into the middle to back half of the week, especially again down there in Southern Texas. Meanwhile, this European model still showing a front that extends from parts of southern Canada all the way back on out here to the central and northern plains. You guessed it. Wednesday afternoon, June 19th, 2024. So expected to remain active there, not only Wednesday, but probably heading towards Thursday and beyond. Look at this. The Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin continuing to be a target for storms, at least according to this model, towards the back half of next week. While other areas stay very dry, if you really look at things, we've got the activity hanging out here, coming out of the high plains, moving into parts of the northern and central plains. Maybe some storms in the northeast by next weekend, but again, that's a little doubtful at this time. The other area where we're going to have precipitation is down here closer to the Gulf Coast. That's where it's looking a little bit more active over the course of the next 7 to 10 days overall as well. So if you think about it, there is going to be that area in the east central U.S., specifically centered around the mid-Atlantic, where we're going to be a lot drier than normal for this time of the year. And that could cause some drought to come on there, as well as in some spots in the Midwest. So we'll keep a watch on that. But for now, let's also talk about severe weather, because we will have some isolated scattered pockets of it, particularly coming out of Montana and in parts of North Dakota and South Dakota on Saturday into the late day. That will also be a pocket of concern down here into parts of eastern Nebraska into parts of Iowa especially where I would normally issue a level three of seven if I were showing my severe scale graphics this is a little bit different though this is just my coverage expectation going from isolated to scattered towards Sunday it's looking pretty isolated here from parts of Nebraska and South Dakota all the way in over there to the upper peninsula of Michigan that's where I would likely have a two of seven for isolated severe weather on my severe weather scale which again goes all the way up from zero to seven Heading towards Monday, though, we're going to get a little bit of a resurgence of some energy, a little bit more feistiness in the jet stream here over parts of the north central region. So if you especially live in central parts of Minnesota, this is where we're going to be watching Monday. And remember, all week next week, there's going to be probably some chances for storms in that area anyway. Here we go towards Tuesday. Look at that. Some parts of Minnesota continuing with at least isolated severe weather potential. And again, these are just my thoughts, looking at some different data, looking at some model data, as well as some of the experimental AI forecasting system data. This goes from parts of Kansas to southwestern Minnesota on Tuesday, a very similar deal on Wednesday as well, according to my graphics here anyway, with the most likely chance for a 2 of 7 for isolated severe weather continuing there into the central and northern plains on and off day by day, all the way through at least the early to mid part of next week. So that's where it's going to remain active, but let's go back to the heat and really dive on deeper into that now. Temperature anomalies as we head towards our Sunday, June 16th, our Father's Day here. You might not like what I'm circling here, but you're going to have to face it because it is on the way and it might be around and stick around for quite a while through the back half of June here. Look at this from parts of Nebraska all the way over there to Michigan, Ohio, and West Virginia. Temperatures expected, according to this model anyway, and some others as well, to be around 10 to 15 to 20 degrees above normal for this time of the year, depending on exactly what spot you're in. And of course, use the key at the bottom of the screen. That's what's always going to help you out in showing exactly what color your exact location is in and what that means for you. Here we go towards our Monday afternoon. This is when I think it's going to peak in terms of the intense part of this heat wave for parts of Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, really a lot of this Ohio Valley and Great Lakes region where some of the numbers are going to be 20 to even 30 degrees above average in some of those grayish white shades there. Detroit, Michigan, yes, you're in that shade on Monday, but that's not the end of this extent of the heat wave here. Look at this. Wednesday, June 19th, still keeping it up from parts of, you know, especially the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes region northeastward from there now. Um, New York into Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Some of these spots going through the end of next week, at least 20 degrees above normal. And look at this, the 6 to 10 day range graphic from the Climate Prediction Center. Exactly what you want to see, right? From June 20th through June 24th, 
yeah, more warmth, and it's focused on the exact same areas. This is going to be prolonged. We might see even a new ridging try to build back up even further down the pattern than I've been showing in this video. That is not something you want to hear, but it is something that you got to prepare for. And make sure you're drinking plenty of fluids. If you don't have air conditioning, look for some sort of shelter or place where you can find that for free in your area. Always check on neighbors, check on pets, keep kids in mind as well, all of that as we have this heat moving on in. Now let's talk daily high temperatures over the course of the next five days. Saturday, June 15th here. It's not too bad in the north, but it's definitely bad with mid to upper 90s, even some record highs in parts of Mississippi, Alabama here in the south. This is where it's going to be really bad on our Saturday afternoon. Plenty of near triple digit temperatures temperatures as well in the high and central and southern plains here. So yeah, a lot of spots still on our Saturday afternoon already baking. You know we've got that dry heat down there in Las Vegas and southeastern California as well as in southwestern Arizona in the Phoenix region. Some spots of course near 110 to 120 there as well. But look at this, it's pretty nice Saturday afternoon in Wisconsin, Michigan, down to Indiana and Ohio where we've still got some 70s and 80s hanging on. Unfortunately, we're going to see a big violent punch get thrown by this heat wave as it moves towards the northeast from the southern United States, now moving on up towards parts of the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes as we head towards our Sunday afternoon. So yes, it's still hot with plenty of mid and upper 90s down here closer to the Gulf Coast. But look at this, we've got them in Missouri, some spots in Illinois here, this area I'm circling, St. Louis, Missouri, we could break a record near 95 to 99 range in this area, all the way on up to near Chicago with low 90s on Sunday. We've got more upper 80s and low 90s now filtering in into Detroit, parts of Cleveland, as well as other areas in Ohio, Indiana, and in northern Kentucky. Look at this in the northeast, parts of areas from New York on over to Maine. Still okay Sunday, but it's going to start getting bad Monday there. It's going to be a lot worse to your southwest, though. What's interesting is that we're still in the upper 80s and low 90s, so we're hanging on to that moderate heat that's normal for the south this time of the year down here closer to Texas, over to the Carolinas and Florida. But what is abnormal is what's north of this. And in fact, if you're in Missouri, parts of southeast Iowa, into Illinois on Monday, we've got mid and upper 90s in a lot of locations. Warmer than it is about 100 to 200 miles south of you if you're in any of these areas up here into the Midwest and Ohio valleys in a lot of spots. Detroit, Michigan, central Michigan, uh, Indianapolis, Terre Haute, Indiana, on over here to Cincinnati, Ohio, Dayton, Toledo back down to the southeastern and northeastern even parts of Kentucky, you know, areas in between mid and upper 90s on Monday. This is unbearable heat, okay? So you need to make sure you're limiting your time outside, especially if you can. If you have to work in the heat, you need to be drinking water as frequently as you can. Your body and it staying healthy and safe in this kind of heat is a lot more important than whatever job you may have to do, even if you might not think that. This is very dangerous heat. Even up in the Maine on Tuesday, look at this, some 90 degree readings up there. New York City, parts of, you know, New Jersey where some of these numbers are so boxed out in the record high category there that you can't even read them. This is very intense even towards Wednesday and I think more areas in the northeast are going to be impacted than the Ohio Valley in terms of record highs in those boxes on Wednesday. It's still bad here from Illinois eastward especially where we've got at least some low to mid 90s there all the way up here into places like New York City, all of New Jersey. Over to Boston we've got mid 90s for millions of Americans. This is a highly populated area. It's going to feel even worse on those concrete slabs that you got there in the cities. Meanwhile, back on over here to the northwest, I hate to say this, but there's some pretty good relief over there. So if you're over there, I guess enjoy it because there's a lot worse going on in the east. Here we go. Thursday, June 20th, 2024. Look at this. Do we see the heat wave moving? Not really. From Indiana all the way on over there to eastern New York, still some record highs being broken. Ohio is really in the epicenter of a lot of what's going to happen next week, day by day. So we'll be watching that. But what we're also watching... Every video this year is the tropics, especially during hurricane season, of course, from June to November. The Gulf needs attention next week, and that's what we're covering in this edition of Two Minutes of Tropics for our June 14th of 2024. The latest graphical outlook for the seven-day tropical weather here from the National Hurricane Center as of mid-afternoon on our Friday here of June 14th, 2024 is as so. You can see we've got the yellow area there right off the east coast of the United States. This is not going to develop at this point, even though it's got a 10% chance. So don't expect anything out of that. If it is, it'll be a tropical depression. It's weakening heading northeast. What we are a little more concerned about is what's in the Bay of Campeche right here off the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico heading into the southwestern Gulf. That's what that region is. We've got a 50% chance of development out of this, and it is down the longer road and in the middle part of next week. That's when we're going to be watching this. You can see on the GFS model here, and I use it because we're going to be looking at another feature a little bit further down the line using this model. Model. This is pretty accurate. This is going to be pretty accurate because the European model agrees on this as well. Right down there, touching that tip of Mexico, moving into parts of the southwestern Gulf. We've got this little area of some of those lighter yellows and, and moving into the greens. So that's where we've got a weak area of low pressure, probably some sort of depression or low-end tropical storm. This could be Alberto, our first tropical storm of 2024, forming down here in the southwest Gulf. Sometime, not likely Monday, 
but probably late Tuesday heading into Wednesday. That's when I'd expect this to form in that region. It could be a little bit further north than where this GFS model shows it, but nonetheless, expect some impacts from the rainfall and the gusty wind, mainly in Mexico, with a lot of the more rainy concerns impacting parts of Texas and Louisiana. The wind isn't going to be quite as big of a concern there, as this will be a pretty weak storm to begin with. Then as we go towards our Sunday, June 23rd, this is a long way out. We're eight to nine days out here. The GFS model has another feature in the Gulf of Mexico, and I don't think this is anything that we need to be worried about right now here in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, and Gulf Coast states. But nonetheless, it is something that the GFS model tries to hint at now and then with this kind of setup and the high pressure, then trying to move on off into parts of the Atlantic, and that would steer it on up towards the Florida Panhandle with that kind of setup. That's unlikely right now, but it shows that this time of the year we need to watch what moves through the Gulf because that is where some close-to-home formation definitely occurs, so you want to make sure that you're watching that. Of course, we're watching the heat as well. If you want to watch everything with me weather-wise here in the future, hit that subscribe button. That's it for this video. I hope everybody has a blessed start to your Father's Day weekend. One Nation Weather.